I'm not prepared. Look at our sluggy fellas. Yes, dude. Big slug boys gathering up to gather all our new stuff with the Shadowlands arriving. How many of you had a dead server? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, how many people were super salty at me because my launch was fine, as was it for the vast, 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 vast majority of people playing World of Warcraft. Their experience was actually golden, but we had a couple of dead servers, and I don't blame those guys for being mad. Th we've had reports of, what, three to four hour queues on various realms to get back in with people returning to the game to jump into an expansion so massively different than we experienced through Battle for Azeroth that it's unreal. And we're starting to see people asking those questions. Do I even need to do X and Y? Because I've been taught throughout Legion and I have been taught throughout BFA that I should do X and Y. And now I don't appear to need to do X and Y. So am I gold or what? what what's the story, Mike? And uh, we're getting there as a team. Let me put myself in a right place here. That's too far. That's no good. Come back, Mike. Where did you go? Mike! Hello! Oh, Mike, where are you? I've gone! I just want to be behind the box. I'll just do this. There we go. I know what I can do. There it is. I like having a bit of my arm showing. Just a smidge. Just a smidge of the arm. Just a little smidgeroo to go with it. <clears throat> we have had all those things. There he is. Hello. Hello. Yes, all these wonderful things that we've been doing over the course of the last three days. Two capped characters. Wonderbar. Two capped characters. Geared up. We've got a 178 hunter that is a blaster. An absolute blaster. And our 170 DK who got particularly unlucky with gear drops. So he's a little behind, but that's all right. That's okay. He could be a little bit behind. That's all good. Fix the typo in the announcement, please. Uh, no. <laughs> I'll fix it later. Hairline looking crisp. Yes, the scabbing is almost completely gone. And we can see all this hair. There's hair there. There's real hair there. Real stuff. Started to come in, but it won't be for another six months to see how well it has taken place. I do get to coconut oil up. And I will do an update video on it for those people who have been asking me uh, to do that. To give some sort of indications to exactly how it's gone overall. Is there anything I would have changed? All those kinds of things. Uh, we will sort that out as soon as we possibly can. So don't worry if that is something you're waiting for. The golden main is on its way. It is. It is. I'll tell you what's almost not available. And uh, because not only did the Shadowlands come out this week. For those of you listening on YouTube. Our website is now live. After so many years of trying to get it organized. Our man Mr. Nups put in the work. And has it done and dusted. The website is now live. That means that if you are a Twitch subscriber, you automatically uh, entered into... I'm slightly transparent. I'm just trying to fix this. You're automatically granted premium access. So all that stuff you've been hearing us about us talking about on Patreon and all that kind of stuff uh, is now available to you. And we were also going to be asking over the next little while, I'm still semi-see-through, uh, whether or not we can get our wonderful Patreons to transfer over to our website. Because, of course, we don't exist without those Patreons at all. We don't exist without them. Uh, but we want to move it over to our website for a number of reasons, including which Patreon takes rather a large cut uh, of the pledges. Not not super large, but large enough to be noticeable. And so we are going to be asking that, which includes drama time. So, of course, the $10 tier is what gets your name into drama. But don't worry. Don't worry if you've been waiting for your name to come in. We will be using the Patreon names as a priority and then slowly moving over over the next little while when we would like to close Patreon down. So that's happening. So PreachGaming.com is now live, including we had some awesome shirts made for our experience over the Batter and Alpha, uh, the Alpha and the Beta, uh, which are, there's a few sizes left. We are running out now. <laughs> Since launch night, they are running out. Uh, but there you go. Those are the things that are happening. But that's not why you're hit, not here right now. I just saw the picture, actually, of all the shirts going out. There's one double XL t-shirt left. There, exactly. They are running out. Uh, so the link for those of you on YouTube, the link will be down below to whatever is after. There's one double XL t-shirt left. Godspeed, whoever gets it. What Godspeed? But what I have in front of me right now, what I have in front of me right now is some stories that we just chose because we were streaming right up until this point that we have picked based on the names. Uh, the names sounded intriguing enough for us to have a read. We have the Great Purge of 2020. 
curious. I, I'm, I'm actually going to jump into this. I wonder if this is a story. I'm not quite sure where this goes. I wonder if this is a story of the uh, removal of the dead weight, perhaps? <laughs> Would be my guess. The removal of the dead weight of the guild, moving into a new expansion. Sounds about right for me. It sounds like something that would absolutely happen coming into a brand new expansion. This is uh, uh, the guilds <laughs> start removing people. Uh, so woo, let's have woo. Uh, the story we'll talk about, and we need a guild name. Now, I've got to tell you guys, this is a really edgy guild name. It even includes some funky letters. So some interesting guild names would be good. Jamie, let's get you in. The Jamie. Uh, let's get the Jamie. Let's get uh, Bran Flakes. <laughs> The Sluggers. The Sluggers is a good one, actually. I like the Sluggers. Uh, the Sluggers is a good one. Wraithen. Put Wraithen in. That's four. I need three more names, actually. Holy crap. A lot of names. Uh, Will. Will Muck. Two more. Belagar. Hope I'm saying your name right. I bet I'm running out of space, aren't I? I am. I am running out of space. Let's see if I've got a short one. Kalash. And I'll squish it a little bit. Bit of a squisher. Should be alright. Squish it. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Shadow babies. Oh, God. Has everybody picked their covenants? <laughs> Have you committed? Have you committed? Uh, <laughs> did you feel like it was an important, meaningful choice? Or did you know the answer from the start? So many questions I'll ask all of you. Um... But not right now. Right now is drama. Okay. Our friend here who has written us this story opens with a request from this wonderful audience here. I am not here to seek judgment. I know what we did is righteous. But we would like advice. We would like advice. <clears throat> <laughs> okay it is what we suspected actually mike i wish to share with you a tale that your audience may find interesting this is how you get rid of the leeching vermin that are polluting your guild once and for all i suspect this is not going to be a casual heroic friendly guild i suspect this might be a, a guild that is about to go hardcore but what do we consider casual leeching vermin I started playing WoW during Legion with some heroic clears here and there and started BFA with the willingness to become thick. To become the bigness. To become the manliest. I managed to defeat Gahoon Cutting Edge and then joined my current guild because the latter was mainly composed of douchebags. Once I arrived in the Sluggers, some friends of mine joined me and we went on our merry way to kill Jaina. Missing Ashara by a few weeks and defeating Nazoth in record progress time. For my part, I managed to gain an officer spot during the Eternal Palace and was put in charge of recruitment and ranged DPS. Placement and cooldown optimization are some of my responsibilities. The fuck does that mean for ranged DPS? Telling me when to use my cooldowns. Fucking use my cooldowns. Remember what? Use my fucking cooldowns. You understand? It's AOE to be had, dude. <laughs> it's AOE to be had. You're not telling me not to use coolies on AOE. Using my coolies whenever I want to use my coolies. Once that was done, and the mounts started to be. Oh, it's the mounts. And the mounts started to be given to all the raid members. We had an officer meeting about what the guild. What the guild's right track was supposed to be. Or the Shadowlands. It's a nice way of putting it. In the meeting, we figured that overall, people need to be more aware. They need to be more aware of their character. And their character's health. But nothing too difficult to handle with most raiders. And also, we realized that our raid roster had a lot of spots on it that were taken by people who weren't regularly showing up to raid. 
but they are raiders. According to the according to our guild roster, they are raiders. That's where Wu comes into play. Wu had been an officer in the guild since long before I arrived. But because of some unfortunate events, including, and I quote, gypsies cutting the internet cable in my neighborhood. <laughs> they often do that, you know. Travelers, internet cutting all the time. Very standard procedure for travelers to do that. Very standard for procedure. <laughs> <laughs> Wu wasn't able to attend most of the Battle for Dazzle or Progress. He wasn't able to attend a good chunk of Eternal Palace because, and I quote, those damn gypsies have done it again. <laughs> Don't seem to be traveling very far, do they? They just seem to be in your neighborhood. Hmm. And finally, as you could probably guess, Wu wasn't able to attend most of Nihilotha progress because of you-know-who striking yet again. <laughs> they seem to be li Isn't it strange that the travelers are fully aware of when World of Warcraft uh, tiers are releasing? What an odd thing that seems to be going on there. They must be keeping track. They must follow, like, my YouTube channel or they're following the subreddit. They must be following Twitter or something so they know when to get you. His parents-in-law was stuck at his place because of the corona lockdown. Oh, no, sorry. I, I take it back. It was not because of the travelers. Not in Nihilotha. No, no, no. He wasn't able to raid Nihilotha because his parents were at his house because of corona. Well, I can't play WoW with people in the house. Like, that would be absurd. What am I going to do? Just play on the computer sometimes? Are his parents the gypsies? <laughs> plot twist. What a plot twist. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother on the stupidity of that excuse. We would have let it slide since he's an officer. And overall, he's a good guy if he hadn't contributed to one of our arguments, which was... Mate. Just asking, how are we going to distribute the Nazoth mounts? Well, the people who progress the boss would get the mounts first. Then the bench. And then whatever we've got left, we'll give to other members of the guild. Don't like that plan, mate. Not sure about that, mate. It should go to uh, officers first, don't you think? For keeping everything organized, you know what I mean? I'm just saying it's the officers that are keeping this guild running. They're greasing the wheels, you know? Pretty sure the officers should be getting mounts first. Pretty sure, mate. Jamie, one of the other officers' answer was, no. <laughs> Raiding is what loads of us do. And you don't even show up to the raids. So how about you start showing up to the raid, then you can argue about who deserves a fucking mount. <laughs> I like Jamie. Jamie's a good guy. I tell you what. I tell you what. You show up to a fucking raid once in a while. Then you can have a little opinion on where the mounts go. How about that? How about we throw that out there? How about you contribute to actually killing the fucking boss that drops the mount? Then you can have a little say in where the fucking mounts go. How about that? <clears throat> you can imagine what Wu's argument was from that point. You could feel it bubbling up. The only word to summarize what had just happened to Jamie, and obviously his lack of mount to come. Elitists! You especially! Elitists! The guild has become full of elitists! I knew it! I take a small break and it's just rife with elitism. We're doing mythic bosses and there's just elitists everywhere with their sims and their numbers and their is it an upgrade and their corruption. I knew it. I knew it. There is just no concern amongst you damn elitist robots for those of us who have RL commitments that we can't just avoid because a raid has come out. Just because you have killed the boss, you elitist scum. He never managed to even conclude his rant as he went on. Because he was banned from the Discord and kicked from the guild. Oh, 
<laughs> well, and that's quite enough of that. I bet that was Jamie. You know it was Jamie. Jamie with zero fucks to give. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, he was kicked from the server mid-sentence and then removed from the guild. Oh, That was one down. This began the ball rolling. An officer could be kicked. This presents an opportunity. Let me move you on to Branflakes. Branflakes was a holy priest with a shadow priest spec, off spec, which was very valuable in low-end mythic guilds. The problem with Bran Flakes is that he was always flapping his gums, complaining. At least once a week after each raid, Bran Flakes would ask for an officer meeting all the fucking time. Don't get me wrong, Bran Flakes really did seek to do what was best for the guild. The issue was that each of these little meetings with him started to go on for one to two hours. No, no, no. I can't get Alex to talk for more than five minutes. Fucking one to two hours. And Bran Flakes, unfortunately, in his mind at least, was always, always correct. He was that kind of guy who would just keep arguing and arguing and arguing, even when blatantly wrong. So every conversation with Bran Flakes in these one to two arm, uh, one to two hour rage sessions, ended up with us either saying "Yeah, sure, whatever," and logging off, or shut the fuck up, depending on which officers had made it through most of his talking. Bran Flakes wasn't very happy with the fact that we had six healers in our roster. We all uh, brackets here. We always had to take one extra because there were always people missing, and we just needed the extra spot to adjust and get everybody into the raid. So Branflakes dis- devised a strategy since we refused to get rid of a healer, and his strategy was to make one of our holy pallies quit the game. He began schemes which we quickly spotted, and warned him that this was not acceptable. Just because of how he wanted the healer roster to look. What a dick. In response to this, Bran Flakes called an officer meeting. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Where he put forward that we didn't understand how the healing was supposed to work and that we should promote him to the healing officer. Hmm, you definitely sound like someone the officer team would like to have in conversation all the time. Of course, the officer team couldn't stand 15 minutes of conversation with him. (laughs) We let him believe. Oh, God. Our first response was to convince him that we would definitely have that conversation after Castle Natria progress. You pussies. You fucking cowards. You absolute cowards. Look, we're de- that's a good idea. We're definitely going to talk about it after Castle Nathria. Promise. Promise. We're definitely going to do it then. <sighs> Obviously, that conversation in our minds was going to go, absolutely not. You will never, ever be an officer of this guild. But that's all that he needed. That is all that he needed. And Brown Flakes really did want to get rid of a healer. Uh, the, he- the healing officer at the time, oh, they already have a healing officer, was Raythan. So Branflakes went up to Raythan and said, I don't know if you, oh my god, what a fucking asshole. Hey, Raythan, I don't know if you know this, but I've had a little word with the officers. I'm going to be the officer of the healers. I'm going to be replacing you. I think we should start the transition period during progress. Now, honestly, we had fucked up. Because Raythan saw this in his words as treason. What is this fucking guild? You've got treason? (laughs) You have some treason? Treason? (laughs) He really didn't want to hear our side of the story. And left the two of his constant complaining friends to form a guild on another server. You lost lost your fucking healing officer because you wouldn't deal with this clown. 
How many times do I have to say it in drama time? How many people does it take to kill a guild? How many people? We see it all the time. It takes one person to kill a guild. That's it. It doesn't matter how stable your guild is. It doesn't matter how rock solid and how many years your guild has been around. It takes one poisonous apple to ruin everything in a guild. It takes one person. Every time, it takes one fucking person. And this is why you let these guys get away with this shit. <sighs> so, in total, if you're keeping track, we have lost four people from our guild. Excluding the one you actually want to get... Oh, no. You've got one you want to actually get rid of. But you've left this other guy. The funny thing was that the guild... <laughs> That the guild that Raythan created on the spot actually had already existed for a month before this rage quit. And he quit the day after all his friends got the Nazoth mount. Oh, fair enough. He was leaving anyway. Now, don't worry, chat. We instantly banned Brand Flakes on the spot. Fuck that guy. That's five people down out of this guild. Who's next? Who's next on the list? Will! Big Will's up! Will was the last to get removed from our roster. He wasn't kicked. Will was the kind of guy that has been in your guild forever. He always manages to keep a raiding spot because... Even if he will... <laughs> because, that's it. That's the description. <laughs> because. Even if he will argue every decision and is an AoE magnet because big dick deeps, he has the wonderful ability to not miss a raid night. God bless. God bless the ability to show up. Once we announced to him the sad news of his departure from the roster. Oh, you benched him? You benched Will? You benched Will? I feel bad for Will. His ability... Once we benched Will, his ability to argue about everything and being a badass warrior vanished. And he instantly swapped for a sob story. In quotes... If you can't alpha your way out, just make them pity you, was his plan. We have known Will for years. Ten minutes after we told him he would not be on the raid roster for the Shadowlands, he said he has a degenerative disease on both his eyes that makes him see everything in double. So that's why he was always being killed in raid. Luckily, I was thinking on my feet, and my reply was, if you see two things that can kill you, why aren't you dodging both of them? He never replied, he just left the guild. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Six people down. Six people down. Now, I feel that seven is kind of a magic number. Don't you? Uh, not really, no. We have this dude, Belagar. Belagar, who is the biggest DPS whore I have ever seen. He can't stop casting even after a DPS stop call by a raid leader. Oh, I've never seen anybody like that in my life. That'd be crazy. He plays a mage. And last time, he managed to make us wipe on Nazoth because he tried to squeeze an extra frost bolt before ice blocking the harvester soak. Oh, my God. Oh. Frost at Nazoth? DPS whore, you say? He's always gets hit by corrupted viscera AoEs because he's casting his frost bolts. And after multiple warnings, he was still doing this shit. During pre-patch? Oh, it could be during pre-patch, actually. Yep, good call, good call. <sighs> oh, he's asking for our advice. <laughs> oh, my. Belagar is scheduled for a meeting this week as we prepare for, Nyloth uh, for Nathria raiding. Chat and preach, what should I do? Thank you for listening to my little story. What should you do? Uh, uh, yeah, you 
you threatened with the bench. Not much more than that. There's nothing else you can say. Like, you either kick him or you say you do that again, you're on the bench. You're not reliable. You're not you're untrustworthy. You're a you're a time bomb waiting to go off. You're gonna waste all our fucking time. That's bench worthy stuff, dude. That's bench worthy. And if he wants to let the man cast his frots bolts, it's just a bench situation. Yeah, if he's had a warning, so you're going to be benched otherwise or you'll be in reserve. But the rest of the guys aren't going to put up with your shit. It's not about the guy. Here's the thing, right? When you get into these scenarios, it's not about that dude. That doesn't matter. It's about the rest of you guys. That's why one guy ruins a guild. The rest of you guys won't put up with that shit because the officers look like they're not dealing with it. You have to deal with it. You've got to deal with the problem. Otherwise, your good raid is just going to be like, well, fuck this. Fuck this shit. In fact, he could do it. I'm going to do it. You get those people. Ew, gross. Uh, we did not use Kalash in that story. So maybe we can throw Kalash in here. At least he got his frostball in. Aw. <laughs> Aw. All right. This one is titled, My Last Letter to a Friend. Now, this one's interesting because this one's done something that most people don't do. Which is, they have included screenshots of their character with their proof talking to us in slash say. So for those of you who call fake every time a story title is even mentioned, we have the proofs. We have the proofs. Fake, yeah, fake, 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 fake. Right, I'll leave one name in to see where this goes. <laughs> let's let's have a little gotta be fake gotta be fake what you provided proof definitely fake 100 percent. hello preacher and your wonderful chat i've been a big fan for a couple of years and i have a unique drama store for you as the entire thing is written in first person from my perspective the page length is deceiving <clears throat> because i've included lots of screenshots throughout this proof of proof of my actions without giving anything away a very good friend of mine I have known since high, since high school has removed me off Battle.net and Discord about six months ago and has been ignoring my existence ever since. Whether you read, read this story or not, I am going to send him this exact letter. Except some of the stuff I've written in this shade of blue to help you understand the context of our situation. And after I was finished writing it, I thought it'd be a funny story for people to hear. So quick background on me for context. I was doing cutting edge raiding in Legion. However, I wanted to stop mythic raiding after being burnt out from prog and killing mythic avatar and mythic kill Jaden in tomb. I started putting my efforts into gold making ever since. I have made a total of 161 million gold in BFA and through the auction house alone. I have attached a screenshot as proof. Uh, we do have proof. So let me make sure I do this without revealing his, his character name is in it. So uh, let's do it this way. Fuck this guy. What, for making gold? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Fuck this guy playing the auction house. What a dick. All right. So we have total gold acquired, 161 million gold. Um, most gold ever owned. And we can see here, hey, Preach, please read my drama story. So, yeah, he did it. Fuck this guy. Can't believe this guy was, like, playing the auction house. What a douche. What a total douche dollar. You'd be surprised how many billions of gold are in the WoW economy. I wonder what Blizzard sees. They must have the total. Shopped, shopped, oil prince, shopped, shopped. Oh, here's the names. I wanted to raid with old high school friends at a relaxed pace. Now, Judge Preach and Jury Chat. I could tell you my friend and I are both guilty. But all I want to know, who is more guilty? <sighs> okay. <laughs> who is more guilty? I haven't pre-read these stories, by the way, because we were streaming all day. So I don't know where we're going with this. Uh, so we need Kalash. Uh, we need two names for this one. And then there's five names we were barely mentioned. So I'll grab names as we go from our audience. So, uh, what's your name there? I'm going to go with uh, Joe West. Hopefully, that will you will know who you are. Okay. I'm going to go with Joe West. Uh, we'll pick them as we get to them. 
So there's two names that are two main characters, and then there's names that are only mentioned five times or less. I'm the author, okay. Uh, I'm only I only refer to myself a single time, and there is another guy, a friend who is mad at me, and pers okay, so we have the friend. <laughs> I am saying you in this entire story. It's not worth giving him a name since I only use his name twice. All right, all right. Is this the start then? Okay. TBH. I find it comical how this was one of the last messages you sent me. All right. Okay, so this is the final message when they were trying to... This was a text message between the two. Where he was trying to contact this person. To find out what the hell was going on. So we have this evidence. Something to works, don't play it. And that's coming from a person who bashed World of Warcraft uh, at its bad parts and praised it for its good parts. I will, however, read everything. So this is the person. Uh, this is the person he's trying to talk to. I will, however, read everything you have to say so you know I'm not upset. Yo, why did you remove me off Battle.net? Next day, yo, question mark. Okay. All right. Hmm. I'm a little worried where this goes. And here we are. Okay, so this is written in a letter to him. So this is, I'm reading, if you are this person who's left, you are receiving this letter. TBH. This is the start, this is how you're starting the letter with TBH. You're starting the letter with TBH as your first line to this person. Okay. TBH. I find it comical how this is one of the last messages you sent me, which is the one we just showed. And here we are. And you are clearly upset about something. And to this day, I still have no idea what straw broke the camel's back. I expect bitches to leave me on read. I don't expect bros to leave me on read, especially when you know a friendship is on the line. How old are you guys? <laughs> that, that, I would agree. That's pretty cringe. I'm extremely surprised you took this approach as you pride yourself as someone who likes to be a healer in a friend group and talk problems out and enjoy closure to things yet you are going out of your way to say nothing to me and from what i have been told you asked others to say nothing to me as well i think it would be good for both of us to try and talk this out even if you still don't want to be my friend after that conversation if it takes you four plus years to decide you don't like a person and or takes one to two years plus in which you don't want to be friends with someone anymore that's an issue on your end, and I pray for the next person you handle. This is a non-7th grade silent treatment way. Are you sure that you're trying to mend the friendship with this letter? Are you absolutely sure this is what you want? And if you're really going to stop being someone's friend, because a friend enjoys World of Warcraft in a different way than you, and are a difference in ideological foundation of how and in quotes, retail wow should function, you are pathetic. You're absolutely sure you're trying to mend the relationship. You're, you're totally sure that's the aim of this letter. The absolute tragic part about this is I honestly believe that if I said no raiding with you guys, we would still be friends today, which is a really fucking sad that a game we both love and a difference in our individual goals in World of Warcraft is probably a major reason on why a friendship is crumbling. If this fucking story turns out that because you didn't want to raid and he did, and now you're not friends, this might be a Hall of Fame drama situation. If that's what it is, I don't know what it is. I have no idea. If that's what this turns out to be, that like six years of friendship or whatever broke up because you went, do you want to raid? And you went, no. And that was it. <laughs> this could be Hall of Fame. <laughs> okay. Before Battle for Azeroth, you're giving me the same treatment as the Overwatch lady, where she toyed with your heart as she toyed with Chicken Gods and Gertram's hearts. She pit friends against each other. And she catfished all of you. <sighs> I remember you saying something along the lines of, 
I'll always talk problems out unless it's something like what she did or worse. What happened with the Overwatch lady? I'm curious. She sent you nudes, did she, to all your friends? And I remember agreeing with you, saying how I thought you delete everything about her protocol was the correct decision and fuck that woman. Even though I expressed my concerns about her from the very start and occasionally I pointed out very weird out of the ordinary stuff to which you replied with you're pretty weird yourself. Which is a fair point and I agree with you. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> And you even told me sometimes, you just don't get it, man, with women. <laughs> you just don't know women, dude. You just don't know women, dude. Sometimes they look different in pictures. Sometimes they got brown hair. Sometimes they got blonde hair. Sometimes they look completely different. You don't know, man. You don't know women. Not like I do. Get on my level. And you also said something along the lines of, Hey, I hope you can find someone as special as she is one day. <laughs> oh, my God. I like the Overwatch lady. When in reality, she was nothing like the pictures she was DMing you because they were 10 years outdated and she is currently walking munching on top of the fact you live in New York and she lived in what, Florida? Maybe Georgia? I don't know. It was like over a thousand miles away or some shit. I knew she was bad news from the start and got as far away as I could from that situation. <laughs> Are you cringing as hard as I am? Because it's amazing. I love it. We're going deeper. Plus... As you know, around this time, I was having a surprising amount of intimate talks with Massey. So I was in Discord with her while she was unfolding. What's unfolding? Ooh, is that some Zuma word for getting your baps out? Unfolding? Oh my god. Massey, you were unfolding, were you? In Discord, you were unfolding, bro? Don't unfold, Massey. You fold that shit away, yeah? Keep it folded, all right? I don't want to see that. Unfolding. Is that... I think that's some Zuma Baps word. I don't know. <laughs> Tig old bitties. And even after her doing those bad things, you, to you told me you talked to her after you had a couple of days to cool down to discuss why you two should not talk. After you learned the truth behind her motives and actions, it made you... And I forget the names we used earlier, so I'm just going to mix more in. Casual and Shalena legitimately depressed for months damn this overwatch lady really got your heart huh fucking overwatch lady kicking it that's why i wasn't surprised when i heard that you started talking a lot with massey a month after you got catfished did you unfold with the other guy massey you didn't you dirty folding bastard unfolding with another man even though you knew I was still intimately talking with her and that I had told you I'm going to vomit and I had told you I called dibs on Massey. How, how, how do you feel good, Massey? <laughs> do you feel good? You got to be some kind of lady, Massey, to get called dibs on. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I know, man. <laughs> Uh, it continues though. I found it odd that she was having sexually intimate conversations with me and also sometimes talking to you. When I brought it up with her, she told me that you were just depressed and you wanted womanly advice and there was nothing to worry about. Naturally, in 99% of circumstances, I knew this was something I should be worried about and I'll tell you why I wasn't worried at all. At this point, I already had decided in my mind that I was not going to pursue Massey as a girlfriend and was going to tell her I didn't want her anyway. <laughs> You're pulling the I didn't want her anyway card? Fucking hell. And I was going to tell her it would be best if we stayed friends. But I saw it. Oh, he's big brain in it. I saw it as a unique opportunity to see how things what would unfold. Will you please stop unfolding? I beg of you to stop unfolding. Massey stopped initiating messages with me less and less, even though the quality of our conversations had not changed. And I assumed she started talking with you more and more. Then I found out you lied to Shalena and to Chicken God, saying you were visiting a friend in Chicago, when in reality, you went to Texas and visited Massey. 
Obviously, we all assumed it was for Pound Town. I mean, of course. That's all. <laughs> That's a boy. <laughs> when I found out, I honestly didn't give a fuck. Dude, you just wrote an entire page. A page about it. You did give a fuck. Massively. Okay. Uh, when I found out, I honestly didn't give a fuck. But then 10 seconds later, it hit me. You still had not even mentioned that you were talking with Massey. And last, I, last thing I was saying to you about her was that she might be my girlfriend and that I had called dibs and that I had plans of getting close with her. Which means you didn't know that I didn't care because you never talked to me about it. Which in turn means you didn't give a fuck about how I would feel if you went and fucked her. <laughs> The worst part about this is you were having the sex. You were having the sex kind of fucking and I was just getting metaphorically fucked. Oh, you were having real life fucking while I was getting metaphorically fucked. <clears throat> A couple of days later, Having the sex. A couple of days later, you asked me what I thought of the Texas situation. And I said something along the lines of, I don't care that you went to go fuck Massey. In fact, the only thing I'm mad about was you never talking to me about it until afterwards. Massey is just some random e-girl. I never expected much from her. You little slag, Massey. But I expected more from you as my friend. You told me that's fair. And you would work hard to earn my trust back. Especially after how chill I was being about all this. I feel like I made a bro move. By letting that go under the rug. And that alone should be reason enough for you to have a conversation with me. On why you're ignoring me. However. I think you are ignoring. Because of multiple small moments. The part that makes me sad. Is I think most of those. Frustrating small moments. Were our conversations. Were our conversations. About World of Warcraft. <laughs> Which is far more important than Massey. And where your dick went. In fact, the first negative friction we had as friends was when I was explaining my concerns with playing with you guys in the first place. If you recall, before any of this started, around a month before Battle for Azeroth launch, I explained my goals to get ahead of the curve and do a plus 10 key. This can't be real. There's just no fucking way. Do a plus 10 key most weeks. And also explain my main concern of even though we have been IRL friends for years now, I was Horde and you guys were Alliance, so I had never raided with you guys before, and I had doubts that we had the same goals. Is this you flexing how good you are at WoW for ahead of the curve and a plus 10 key over your friends? And you're worried they're too shit for you? Is that what this is? We're going to bypass the fact of the sausage and the hot dog. And we're going to this. <laughs> He's calling dibs on the head of the curve. Okay. You especially sounded insulted at this. And even started yelling something along the lines of, You just don't get it, man. If you're that concerned, just don't play with us. We're good players. And I know we aren't playing World of Warcraft that much right now. But when BFA lands, we're going to smash content, get curve, and do a plus 10 weekly key. So stop being pessimistic and come raid with your bros. It's a fair shout. With the rest of the friend group agreeing, this was a red flag in my eyes. Am I? Am I? Have I gone crazy? Where's the red flag? Where? <laughs> Does anybody see it?
It was a small red flag, but a red flag nonetheless. Literally any person who can get consistently and easily get curve only should respond with, yes, curve is a joke. Instead, he replied with, yeah, we don't play a lot right now because the new expansion's coming. And when it's out, yeah, of course, we'll get curve and do a plus 10. It's not looking good for you, Arthur. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's really not. <laughs> There's no red flag here. Sorry. <laughs> There's no red flag. Okay. TBH. TBH. In that moment, it's not, it's not to be honest, it's actually TBH. TBH, in that moment, I thought to myself, I have seen the achievements of most of the people in the raid roster, and it should be good enough to get curve. And I have tens of millions of gold. In the long run, losing out on two million to faction change and server transfer to raid with IRL friends I haven't raided with before sounded like fun. Especially with the years of your repeated boasting about your prop paladin success stories. And the successes of what you had named the high school raid team. <laughs> Very big at St. Margaret's of West Illinois. Very big. Very. The high school raid team is pretty poggers, right? I'm not going to lie. Pogging off all day. Pogging everywhere. <clears throat> and if things go sour, I will just spend a little bit more gold to transfer elsewhere. So fuck it. Soon after, I faction changed and server transferred my main, my DK, and my alt hunter. The first three weeks, then, of Battle for Azeroth. You've got to send in this letter, really. After the first couple of weeks of BFA... Oh, God. One second, guys. Somebody at my door, I think. The first, okay, I need to read this. The first three weeks of BFA. After the first couple of weeks of Battle for Azeroth, I noticed something. That most people were becoming frustrated with me. It was becoming very apparent that everyone had done exactly zero research before BFA released. And most people were straight up not playing their class and spec correctly. And not realising the importance of choosing the best Azerite traits as well as the best talents. To help combat this, I sent all of you links, such as raid bots, hero damage, blood mallet, warcraft logs, and videos from Fat Boss TV for the upcoming raid. <laughs> and people did click and look through those links and somewhat used them as a reference, which was mess met with thanks and thank yous. At first, in brackets. Very quickly, the thank yous for providing knowledge and resources turned into friends shouting at me. I don't give a fuck, dude. Just let me play the game. <laughs> <clears throat> After this had happened to me a couple of times, I called you guys out for being rude. You guys explained to me how I was rude <laughs> and being a dick. And this level of detail engagement is not how they played World of Warcraft in the past. And it felt like they had invited a helicopter dad hovering over everybody. Oh. I'm doing a show, James. You can't come in here, buddy. I'll be out soon, buddy. In a bit. Good. Close the door. <clears throat> yes. I would invite a helicopter dad over everybody, which was getting very annoying. This is where I took a metaphorical step back to preserve the friendship. Now, I know that you guys were not going to be up to my previous standards <laughs> of getting week one ahead of the curve, nor have as much knowledge about the game as I had. I knew this, was go I knew this going in. And I accepted that progress was going to be much slower. What shocked me 
was that I mainly talked about information important enough so that we could achieve ahead of the curve within, say, two months. Not even crazy things. From what I recall, it was 50% me explaining new BFA systems and asking questions about everyone's class and spec out of genuine curiosity, while also making sure you guys were using the best talent setup if we had trouble killing stuff. And the other 50% was me randomly talking about the best mine and herb routes, maxing out professions, finding out mine and others' bis items from M plus and raids, praising the good ideas presented, and bashing bad ideas. Here is my supporting evidence of this. Okay. We have supporting evidence. With a boatload of stuff to learn, I feel like everybody thought I said way too much stuff about the game at the start of BFA. Ah, well, it's more the percentage of content of our conversations, buddy. Like 98% of our conversations were WoW-related info that was above the degree of effort most of us wanted to put in. So it became monotonous. Well, that's not your fault. It's just your field of expertise, so you can talk a ton about it. How has that been bothering you? One sec, my sister is throwing a fit. There aren't socks. <laughs> Our author says, I promise I was not using my sister's socks for any reason. I don't think any of us suspected that. I think your sister can't find any socks. Although I'm sure your chat will spam gachi. No, oh, they're all spamming question marks. <laughs> no, no. I don't, I'm not sure you're a great predictor of people's reactions, dude. I'm not sure you've really hit the nail on the head. <clears throat> the letter continues, of course. To everyone's credit, it didn't take me long to understand how me... Shooting down most ideas talked about in Discord and explaining why they were a bad idea or a shit idea whilst providing proper evidence to support my claims, end quotation, would not only make them feel frustrated with me, but would also make me look like a control freak as well as a dick. Brackets. Even though... <laughs> you're not giving up, are you? Even though all the times I roasted people... It not only saved them time, but also made them less shit at the game. I didn't say this then, but just to jog your memory now, the first example being almost everyone not knowing some of their spec-specific passes until they all saw their blue-grain-grey passes on Warcraft logs for the first raid week. After which, I sarcastically, but maybe I said it in too serious of a tone, Told everyone, open your spell books and talent trees and read every ability, passive, and talent. Then tell the class what you learned. Fucking kill me. Oh my god, bro. Bro, what are you doing to me? Oh my god. Oh. I was actually dumbfounded when you fucks real <laughs> then proceeded to have a genuine conversation about the new information you learned by reading everything and was excited to test out new things. The second example being... Who should we have? Who's joining? Toadfish, you're in. The second example being Toadfish. At first, refused to use misdirect because I asked her to use misdirect. Yeah, you are reading this right, if you remember... After five-ish minutes, she randomly said, I don't even see a misdirect ability anywhere on my bars or spell book. And I'll be honest, I rudely said, Stop being blind, it's in your spell book. Once you find it, for the love of Jesus, put it on your bars and use it on the tank at the start of the pull. I am guessing she can't remember things that we learned the previous week. Asterisk dot... This cat face fucking thing. After which, of course, she found the ability and put it on her bars. 
They then, on cooldown, used Misdirect on her pet and kept complaining how her pet keeps dying and how Misdirect doesn't deal any damage. To which I said, <laughs> Misdirect doesn't deal any damage. You are misdirecting your pet when you need to misdirect the tank. By the way, I was the tank, so I could see she was doing it on her pet and not me. She then said, I'm just going to take it off my bars because I can't be fucking bothered. <laughs> At this point, I stopped caring and moved on. And I want to point out to you that to this day, she still doesn't use misdirect, as well as other things on her bars. <laughs> Right, we've got another picture here. Oh, she she provided a screenshot of your her UI. <laughs> oh, it's kind of cute actually. She must have linked a screenshot of her UI and he saved it. Sick. <laughs> what have we got? Let's have a look. <clears throat> we have DBM. Is that it? NPC scan, of course, goes without saying. BM, of course. All right, there is no way you're interrupting on five. Turtles, no, oh no, none of these are keybinds, I don't think. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I love that you're still looking for misdirect on the bars to this day. I thought to myself, Everyone's gaps in game knowledge and utility to perform was a lot worse than I expected and anticipated and is probably another red flag for me to just hop ship. I also thought to myself this was still less than 30 days into the expansion. Maybe people are having a rough start. I again, metaphorically, you're not metaphorically, you've used that word wrong every time, took a step back in the conversation and I apologize to everyone for giving them information overload. As well as I apologize for being mean and being a dick. I said my intent was to help prepare people by giving them the necessary tools and give constructive criticism. When in reality, everyone just thought I was being a control freak dick. To which you guys said, even though I was right with most of my critiques, it felt shitty to constantly hear that our ideas were shit and that I single handedly was sucking the fun out of the game. You're sucking the life out of me reading this. I tell you, bro. I agreed. And I again, I apologized. I also said, I am going to change. I am going to change. <clears throat> okay. He's going to change. And we're making a change. I will change my approach to better accommodate everyone. <sighs> I said for the future, I wouldn't comment on WoW related things unless I was asked directly or if people were straight up doing a boss mechanic wrong. You guys said something along the lines of, thank you, that's all we want. And you guys also apologized. All right, so you cleared the air at one point. Everyone agreed to put their best foot forward so we can all play and enjoy the game we all love. Namaste. At this point, I was genuinely sorry for my actions. However, oh God, as terrible as this is, I thought to myself, I really don't think I'm the problem here, but nobody likes a helicopter parent. So let's just see if people can figure out stuff on their own. Also, it might be funny to watch people fuck up. I was really hoping everybody would just be able to figure stuff. Unfortunately, hindsight is 2020. And it wasn't funny when you and the others failed. It was just sad. Really, really sad. Mainly because you guys failed harder than I thought you would. I know who this guy is. I know who this is. As you know. After this, I talked a lot less in Discord. But I got the increasing feeling that people began to dislike me talking about non-WoW stuff too. It, don't, please don't be anime. Please don't be anime. Please don't be anime. Half the time when I started talking about anything, it was met with blaring, I don't fucking care, <laughs> into my headset. And I was very tempted to just jump the, off the sinking ship. But I'll tell you why I didn't <laughs> hop off the ship. It's because... <laughs> but I'll tell you why I didn't. I'll tell you why I didn't take that hint. <clears throat> it's because half of this friend group had was not good at playing WoW. 
and the other half was in a weak spot mentally. Half of this friend group still couldn't, still could have been hurting and maybe even still depressed from the damage caused by Overwatch Lady. Oh, she's back! The long-term trauma of Overwatch Lady. The return. Everyone who fell for that siren's call were also the same people who were the loudest in Discord. And I did not think that was by coincidence. And M- M- Massey. Good God. I didn't want to even imagine... The- oh, it wasn't Massey. Massey was someone else. I didn't even want to imagine the pain of un- unironically being catfished and you being at the epicenter must have felt so fucking pathetic. That being said, from my perspective, me hopping ship seemed like the unhomey like thing for me to do. I can't leave the guild. That's unhomey like <laughs> Very unhomey like actually. So I decided to stick it out a bit longer. For the boys! For the boys! Even if it's gotta be a rough ride, okay? Uldia is released week four. Week four to six. Now let's talk about Old Deer. He's n- he, whoever you're sending this to is never going to read this. Just direct him to the video. If you remember, we one-shot the first boss on normal. Count it. Slap that ass. And TBH, right before the boss kill, I thought nothing of it. This boss was a joke, especially on normal. What surprised me was after the boss kill. Everyone was too excited about one-shotting the first boss. And even you yelled at me, welcome to the guild. They're having too much fun. What are you, what are you on about? They're enjoying themselves too much. It was that in this moment, I had an epiphany. I could see the future. There is no fucking way we are getting ahead of the curve. I didn't even respond on Discord because I didn't want to kill the happiness vibe. You've killed mine. I'm fucking depressed. I wasn't even there. I wasn't surprised when we then wiped on normal mother four or five times. Nor was I surprised when we couldn't kill normal Vectus. Other than that, the first two weeks were fine. We got five out of eight normal and two out of eight hero- heroic bosses died in, a two- died in a two-week period. And it seemed like me keeping my mouth shut was working. Honestly, I was glad that people were actually figuring stuff out on their own. And I had to do less work. It was a win-win. This is until heroic fetid devourer. <sighs> He's a stompy boy. We are three, three, three wipes in. And I noticed healing was low and tanks were dying. It was getting late and I wanted loot. Three wipes. Ain't no guild survived three wipes. I noticed that you were dying the most. Mainly you were dying for not using health stones or HP pots on top of not using your defensives properly. I was checking the logs (laughs) mid-raid. I figured me swapping to blood would ease the strain on the healers. You swapped to DPS and I swapped to tank and we killed it the very next pull. Ugh, I kind of wish you didn't. I noticed that right after Fetty died, you immediately left Discord and left a logged off WoW. I'm not surprised. The next day when you joined Discord, I asked what happened at the end of Raid. Really? You did, did you? Couldn't figure it out yourself. Needed clarification, did you? Couldn't work it out. I mean, I didn't even read the line. I wasn't even there. I couldn't figure it out. Okay. Voices. He's written the conversation out for us. This is the uh, person who the, the letter is designed to go to. This is the person who logged off. I was upset that I died five times in three pulls and you didn't even die on your first pull. I was secretly waiting for you to die while you were tanking. It made me feel like shit to know it was me causing the wipes. Everybody makes mistakes. It was our first night doing Heroic Fetid. Don't overthink it. Oh, you smug prick. Fuck you, dude. I've already overthought this. and It's a huge blow. I'm genuinely upset about it. Then I jokingly said, Would you really rather you kept tanking and dying for the raid not to kill the boss? 
so that your ego wouldn't have got hurt? <laughs> Good joke. <sighs> well, pretty much, yeah. Wait, you're serious? That's really sad. Then you said you had to go and left Discord. Right there, this was when you failed in my eyes. No raid member should have thought, <laughs> thought that during progress... Not a single guild member should have that thought during progress. And most importantly, any good friend, IRL or not, shouldn't hope for their friends to fail during raid progress. I never told anybody this, so here's the truth. I was beyond happy that I out-tanked you. For years, I listened to you talk about how great your tanking was, and this was the extent of it. A below-average tank. Out of all the years I knew you, I'd never seen you behave this way. So week seven, we're in a plus 10 mother load, mother load, you and me and three pugs. And I told you so much before we started the dungeon. I thought you were not doing this anymore. <clears throat> Please don't pull big. It's fortified teaming week. Just take the key slow. To be honest, I don't remember what you said. All I remember is you saying, we'll be fine. Please, <laughs> Please stop talking. You kept pulling too big and we kept dying. After we wiped three times, I vividly remember you saying, Damn, bro, you weren't kidding. I need to pull smaller. I responded with, Look, I already have my plus 10 done. I was just trying to help you get your plus 10. So be smart. These guys are going to leave if we wipe again. You started to pull normal sizes, and unsurprisingly, we stopped dying. We reached a particularly hard teaming pack and asked the pug holy paladin to repentance one of the mobs to make killing the pack easier. Three seconds later, you broke the CC and started laughing, saying, Sorry, bro, I couldn't help myself. And then I then said in the most defeated tone, If we wipe, that pally is going to leave. You said, No, he won't. We're fine, and kept laughing about it. When we wiped and the pally dropped the group and the other two pugs followed soon after, you got furious, yelling, What the fuck? Can nobody take this game as a joke anymore? You kept yelling nonsense, but I just got up from my computer to get water and was very tempted to take the 25-minute drive over to your house, grab you by the ankle, and Hulk thrash you like a rag doll. Oh my god, mother load. Jesus. When I came to my computer, I said I needed some air afterwards, to which you said, yeah, I was really mad that Holy Paladin left too. <laughs> to this day, I have no idea how I remained calm, but I responded to you in a relaxed voice saying, the Holy Paladin was justified in leaving. I would have left too if I was that healer. <laughs> the fact that you actually thought we were going to make the timer after wiping that much in a 10 while being the reason we wiped every time is disgraceful. This is not what I signed up for when you guys asked me to play World of Warcraft with you. And I wanted to G quit. To which you said, relax. They're just elitists that take WoW too seriously. If I had made this group, it would have never happened. I immediately passed you leader, saying, You make the group then. I guarantee any group you make will not complete your plus nine motherload key, and I will not leave the group no matter how bad it gets. I saved a screenshot from that group. I am so sad that I was correct. This was easily the worst Mythic Plus experience I have had in World of Warcraft. Look at the death counter. 201. By the light. It is 201. Armor. Yes, please don't do that. It is 201. We are in the midst of possibly the most insane tale in the history of World of Warcraft ever. Why? What's happened? It's bad. Absolute madness. Leave me to it, though. There we go. We have a 201 plus 9 mother load. Did it though? So you got that. We've got that going for us. <coughs> we got that. <clears throat> the next day we raided and we killed Fetid with you tanking and you didn't die. Then we got hard walled by Zekvoz because nobody could run out of the raid with beams. Week 8, nobody showed up for raid or logged in except except for Shalena and I. Week 9, nobody showed up for the raid except for me. 
I didn't care though. Both weeks I joined pugs that were better than this high school raid team. After two weeks of nobody saying anything, I decided to reach out to Shalena. And he said everybody was burnt out. BFA is a bag of shit. We finished. The, the high school raid team finished five out of eight normal and three out of eight heroic. After four weeks of raiding, three hours a week. That's not bad. Three hours a week? That's it? I knew we weren't going to get ahead of the curve, but at least I thought we would kill Gahoon normal. This is the point. Uh, an author's note, this is when I transferred my characters away. I stopped joining Discord for a while because I was pissed off we weren't going to get curve. And just about every time I entered your guys' Discord, it was met with a blaring fuck retail, to which every time I responded, yeah, the game isn't in a great spot right now, but I'm using gold to pay for my subs, so it's still a great free-to-play game for me. And that was usually enough for you guys to stop banging on about how bad World of Warcraft was. Oh god, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. The savior! Classic World of Warcraft rolled around. You guys asked me if I wanted to play any classic. <laughs> I said, BFA was a disaster. Classic doesn't look like fun. I don't think you guys will stick it out for more than a couple of months. And I don't think classic will do well long term. I was wrong about Classic. It's still doing well. I give you and everyone that, but everyone quit in less than a month, except you, who took it two months to quit. I still can't believe the others, the, uh, the person, especially the person who was hyping up Classic so much, didn't even make it past level 17. <laughs> Woohoo! Classic's coming! God, this is slow. Oh, kill me. <clears throat> I would say most of our WoW conversations had medium to large amounts of negative friction. And off at the top of my head, I can't think of another topic of conversation that had as much negative friction as our World of Warcraft conversations, both on Discord and IRL, even for topics that were straight up disagreed upon. To this day, I would say, outside of World of Warcraft conversations, the conversations we had offered unique points and ideas. They were captivating and fun to talk about, which leads me to believe that our difference in how we want to play World of Warcraft and our WoW conversations were painful and annoying enough for you that you decided to stop being my friend and ignore my existence. And right now you're probably thinking to yourself, that's not what you said, it's the tone in what, which you said it and your poor choice of words in text and Battle.net chat and the Discord is what got me so riled up. To which I call bullshit, he says. I consistently... Have a messed up tone. <laughs> I consistently have a messed up tone regardless of topic. And you know that. You know that. <laughs> sometimes I use the correct tone and sometimes I use the incorrect tone. And I consistently have poor word choice that has not impeded or hindered our relaxed, thought-provoking, insightful conversations. I am absolutely dumbfounded that I'm getting the same burn, delete, ignore everything about a person treatment. I'm especially confused because we had barely talked to each other for the past eight months and you unfriended me six months ago and have been ignoring my texts and messages for three months. I know for a fact I didn't do anything as bad as Overwatch Lady, yet I'm getting the same- <laughs> she's back- and yet I'm getting the same treatment if not worse treatment than Overwatch Lady. I mean, come on! At least she got conversation with closure and I still got nothing. At minimum, you are essentially putting me and Overwatch Lady on the same level, which is terrible and unjustified until you give me a proper explanation as to how I'm as bad as that thing. This fucking Overwatch Lady. All I know is it wasn't one single event that drove you to this point. It had to have been many different points that led to this result. Mainly because if there was a single event that made everything explode, I would be aware of it and would know the answer that led you to the breaking point, which would lead me to not reach out to you or our friends saying, I am very confused by this whole situation from, from what started all this to what led to the result. So what, by this logic alone, I am forced to believe that it was many small moments. Throughout this, I have given examples of my frustration and how I, how I felt of each event, and I don't think any of what transpired is worth perma-ignoring me or throwing away a friendship. In my opinion, the only correct move would be to agree not to play World of Warcraft with each other and still be friends. <laughs> if there are other things that I didn't list in here that you're upset about, that means you're not worth keeping around 
and I don't want to be your friend anymore. This has nothing to do with anything, but you told me that you couldn't make gold with dual crafting. Oh my god. <laughs> Bro. Bro, I beg. My fucking soul is black. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. I, I, I'm not sure how much more I can take. This has nothing to do with anything. But you told me you couldn't make gold with jewel crafting, and at this time I didn't explore that profession fully. But after obtaining all of the jewel crafting re recipes, I can safely say it can make a lot of gold if used properly. So know this. If you can't make gold using jewel crafting, it's because you're not trying, or you're a fucking idiot. Probably a combination of both. I would be surprised if you read this far. I am. I'm, I, I mean, I'm not really. I'm not. You have now moved in with Massey in Texas. Boom! Bombshell! Oh, he's laying pipe! You have now moved in with Massey in Texas, and I hope you stay there. By the way, I'm sure she has told you this, but she has. She told me she has herpes, so have fun with that. Massey's <laughs> got herpes. Ah. Massey's got herpes oh no she's got the peas man massey's got the peas oh fucking hell i'm burning our bridge of friendship p.s oh you get really aggressive at the end you just you're all over the place dude p.s just remember this fuck boy massey initially went to shalana's stream because she thought that he was hot then she set her sights on me I am assuming that after she found out that I called dibs on her question mark. So this day, I don't actually know why she started talking to me. Yeah, it was the dibs. That's what it... Yeah, she found out that you called dibs. So she just came running. Like women do. That's how they work. They check. Guys, who's called dibs on me? You. Well, there we go. That's how they work. That's how I got my wife. I just walked into the bar and I went dibs and all the other guys went well there it is done and she came running over dropped to her knees easy claps <clears throat> and then i actually don't know why she started talking to me so much then she went to you you were her third option and you ended up moving in with her remember that here are some screenshots she sent me on discord to prove why i think she went after me in the order she's maybe he's right who knows man judge jury who is more guilty you you, a hundred percent. Don't even. I'm not even waiting for chat. You, what the fuck, man? You. I have to assume every step of the way that the authors of these stories exaggerate things in their favour. Very rarely do I read a story where I think anybody wrote it back down the line, and I think you did that here. What is going on? I don't know whether... I don't know. There could be a number of explanations for this. I'm not going to make assumptions. But Jesus fucking Christ, dude. We need some help with reading social cues. Big. Big help. Massive help. Is this what considers a dirty text message these days? I'm not going to show this, but I'll read this to you. This is apparently from uh, Massey. This is, is this your flirtatious talk? Hey, do you want to come over tomorrow and eat what my mom made? That was really quick. Are we just eating, hanging out? What time? She made me. Your mom made me, you invite me? No, my mom made me smile. I'm what you'd be eating. Jesus fucking Christ. Fucking Zoomers. <clears throat> I know, right? <laughs> oh, Jesus, please. Uh, yeah. Okay, there are more... Will you... Oh, my God. Will you date me? Breathe if yes. Recite the Bible in Japanese if no. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, I don't know the age. I don't know anything. But who is more guilty? You are, by a long way. 
by a fucking long way. Uber guilty. I think I'm pretty sure. Look, based on all the evidence I have, which is your story, I'm pretty sure your men, your your mate, just fucking found a girl that he was into, and he just moved away, and he was just like goodbye, and he's like fucking an eagle soaring across the valley right now, and that's it. He just was like peace. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm gone. That that was exhausting. With the herpes. <laughs> He's an eagle, sorry. Burn this story. Burn it to the ground. <sighs> I don't even know how to conclude. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I don't even know where we go from here. Like, as, as a species. That was... that. Was, delete the VOD. <laughs> delete the VOD. <sighs> I... I <sighs> It was excruciating. Did you send? I would love to know. If you follow. If you're watching this, you are guilty. Did you send him this? Did you? Did he ever reply? I would love to know. I would love to know. Sweet everything. Don't ever do that again to us, dude. I don't want to do that to myself, bro. Hello, ballers and a bro fist to you all. I'm sorry to say. That Emma is not going to be with you today. I know you're all expecting the dream for her to return and guide you into the light and to provide you with all the happiness that one could imagine. Just as she did for us last Friday. Let me just fix the camera. This one not so blurry. It's getting dark here in the UK. The darkness is descending upon us, friends. It is here. It is happening. And what's this? <gasps> the countdown. Three, eight, three days, four hours, 59 minutes, and eight seconds. The countdown is happening. It's coming. We have just this amount of time until the dream occurs. Until the dream occurs, it arrives. And we now have the countdown up on PreachGaming.com, which will have all kinds of goodies, especially for you out there in Twitch land who are subscribed and are like, Preach, you know what, mate? You know what I mean? I give you my pennies every month. Where's all this extra shit? Let's spray. You guys can be my spritz announcers. <laughs> I don't want the alarm going off. Every 20 minutes, four minutes, and four, four hour, 4 p.m. and 20 minutes. Let me know. There's a spritz due. There is a spritz due. I'm so sorry I couldn't be with you last week. Uh, the hair transplant did get moved. It has been officially a week today. Uh, thank you so much, Carbon Fury. Uh, it's been officially a week today since I had it done. As you can see, we are no longer wearing the official Cobra Kai headband. It has been retired. The Cobra Kai headband has been retired. Uh, and we are now looking to hopefully get the rest of my head cleared up. Uh, as I just had to go and pick up my kids from school. With my uh, scabby head. <laughs> with my scabby head. And do all those wonderful things. Uh, that's always good while walking around and people are giving you that odd look like what the hell happened to him? What in God's name happened to him? It has been an insane week. We had we were on all craft last night, of course uh, If you didn't see that that is already up on rich Campbell's YouTube channel uh, If you missed all craft last night with me Asmon and rich having a great time sort of saying goodbye to BFA Talking about Shadowlands and of course hair because it was bald craft uh, <laughs> and, uh, There's a lot of hair loss going on across the pond as well as it is here so it's all good. Did I see the MDI team are pushing for World First 60? I have seen the video that Mr. Gingy has put out and it is horrifying. Um, a masterpiece in many ways. Uh, <laughs> a masterpiece in many ways. So it is one of those things that, yeah, I did see. So Emma did come for us last week, but that's not what we're going to do today. Um, Monday night, I will reiterate it just so guys let you know. When Monday night, when the Shadowlands launches at 9 p.m., our stream will come up. We've got a big celebration. I'm sure you've seen the YouTube video or Twitter. We have so much stuff to give away. We're going to have a big party to get that leveling going. We'll be with you through the night to have some fun, whatever your entertainment is. And of course, with the website also launching on Monday, uh, for those of you who are not Patreons of ours, you will have access to all those cool interviews you've been hearing about with people from the original Nihilum in Classic, Roger Brown, Scripe, Zalgradis, one of the originators of World of Warcraft content creation, Zayu, Best, people, best mage in the world. All that will be accessible to you on that day, along with a bunch of other stuff that is going to be on the site 
for you. So you will have all that stuff. It should all work, right? It's going to crash. Look, let's just be honest. It's definitely going to crash. Something's going to happen. Something's going to go fucking wrong. <laughs> there is no doubt whatsoever. There is no doubt whatsoever. And our mouse pads will be finally up for sale. The final 40 of them will be up for sale for any of you who are after these original big giant mouse pads. Although we will be giving one away on Monday. Yeah, poor Nups. Can we all can we give Nups a collective cuddle? I haven't even heard from him from like three days. I actually just checked in with the team to see if everybody's okay. Because Chris and Nups are just balls to the wall doing stuff. <laughs> They're so busy trying to get it working. Make sure everything is right. So collective cuddles to Nups, who is uh, who's built the site. Uh, along with Bex contributing a lot of stuff as well. So yeah, <laughs> it's definitely going to die. It's okay, Mike. We forgive you for now. We forgive you for now. But that's not why you tuned in on this fine Friday. I am certainly, I know, ready for bed. Uh, because I've only slept two hours in the last 24. So we want to have some fun. Does anybody remember these? Does anybody remember this? This idea of blizzards? To up the skill level of the people you meet in day-to-day -day life. You might remember it. Mm? You might remember this idea. This... <laughs> This idea that was to lock you out of doing various content until you have proved yourself. A fine idea. A fine idea. Players will prove themselves. Didn't really work. <laughs> as, as, uh, as the story goes. Didn't really work. Um, as far as we know. What I think actually happened. And maybe you guys have got different theories. Is I think... A lot of people couldn't do the Proving Grounds, and they spent a lot of the expansion relegated to, like, normal mode dungeons. Was it heroic you weren't allowed to do until you'd done Proving Grounds? I think it was, right? You weren't allowed to do heroic until you had done silver or bronze or something like that. And I think maybe a lot of players literally got languished. I would like to check that out. Maybe it didn't happen. I actually don't know. I actually have no idea. Uh, whether that actually happened, but I suspect it might have done, <laughs> unless it was just became a tedious thing. Uh, who knows? I would love to know the actual answer to that. Bye! Whoa! Uh, I wonder if I can clear that green up a little bit. Let's have a little quick look. Just I don't want to mess around with it. Oh, there we go. That was easy enough. Well, that was super easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all good. I did them on my Felder and it wasn't that hard. No, they weren't that hard, but they're not that hard for you. How do you level a character against this point of being able to do Proving Grounds? A lot, actually. Um, during the era of the Proving Grounds, a little bit of history lesson for you, I was contacted by a lot of people who could not do them. And what I was doing was doing them privately while doing a little bit of commentary to help them and then sending them the YouTube videos privately. Uh, I would upload like a little 10 minutes of me doing the Proving Ground, how to do it on whatever class they were stuck on. And then sending them a little private YouTube video of how to do it. So there were a lot of players who could not get past the Proving Grounds. So, let's see. What a guy. Not really. I felt kind of bad. Like, that was, there was an elitist element to it. I was like, God, they're so easy. Like, bronze especially was so easy. But some people need that little bit of extra help. And if I could do it, fair enough. <laughs> well, here we go. <clears throat> let's get started. So let's have a nice fun Friday. Hello, Preacher, and the masters of the chat. You are the masters now. I am a returning author that has lost his guild because of war of law and an unfunny French person. You usually tell stories about people getting better, growing at the game. In a few sentences in a bigger story, and it feels like a monologue while Live to Win plays in the background of the inspiring tales of these players. But not all of us follow that path. Here is my tale of me getting better in the game in the dumbest fucking way possible. Using the Proving Grounds. Honestly, the Proving Grounds and all the time I dedicated to it made me from a total noob to a less than average player. But, but, I have to say it did set me on the right path. We will need one person for this. A god-tier paladin. Nystrom. Some context. I started the game. First time ever. Mists of Pandaria. All my friends started with me. Made me a healer. And then they all left after the summer. I joined my first guild. A couple of months before Warlords of Draenor launched. As a social. 
I was kicked from that guild two days before launch for being useless. There I lay in Ogrimmar, humiliated, frustrated, bitter, and angry. Imagine being kicked before expansion launch. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's really dark. <laughs> Even though this, like, we expect people to leave after a new expansion launch, so you tend to keep everybody just in case, but you're that bad that they know that you are not the direction they want to turn. Understood. After I lost my guild, I started looking for a new one. But I quickly realized all guilds were dickheads. Oh, don't be that guy. You were in one guild. One. A guild that kicked you before expansion. And now all guilds are bad. All guilds are bad. Some of these guilds were super... Tr oh my fucking god, man. Some of these guilds were super try-hard and asked me to make applications. Imagine just not not just letting everyone in. Imagine. Imagine. I swore that day to never be in a guild again. I have since broken that promise in parentheses. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. I think I already sent you a story, but if it didn't make it to drama time, I can resend send it if you want. I honestly, I can't remember many of the drama stories. We go, I go through some emotional turmoil reading these stories, and I've told many of them. Um, so I don't often remember. <laughs> the, probably Bex is the, it's the lady who knows. So I decided I am to become a solo player. A lone wolf in Walls of Draenor. I will be the one-man army to tackle whatever faces us. Hmm. I began my solo journey by pugging Highmall. Incredibly motivating. <laughs> Just inspiring, actually. Just inspiring. Oh, man. I begin this journey by pugging Highmall. I was terrible at this game. It turns out this was one of the reasons I was kicked from my guild. We guessed. Like, we guessed. I didn't need to read it. We guessed. I could defeat tanks in the damage meter. But only sometimes. Of course, it couldn't be me. That would be insane. What was it, you might ask? Twas, of course, my gear. My gear. It is the only answer. Because how could I be bad? How is that possible? Of course, I told myself. I'm not a bad player. I have been told many times World of Warcraft is an easy game. Easy life. It can't be me. It must be my hammer. It must be my shoulders. It must be the boots that don my feet. I have been playing World of Warcraft for two years. No pug I joined could finish High Mall. Mostly, my, my pugs would kill the butcher and then fall apart. The best creme de la creme groups I ever got in failed to kill twin ogrons. No pug of mine could kill them. I never even saw the last boss except for the LFR. I had came up with an idea. A solution to my problem. Because, of course, I am not the problem. I will make my own pugs. The best pugs. The cream de la creme of pugs. I shall take this matter into my own hands. I was going to start my own pugs and fill it with the absolute highest item level people I could find. Genius. That is fresh. That is fucking fr If only. If only we'd thought of such an idea. If only... We could have come up with such a revolutionary situation. <sighs> that way, they would kill the boss and I would get the loot. It might factor in that I would, I might be a factor in master, the master loot change. You weren't. You weren't. <laughs> Weirdly though, once I listed my group, there weren't many high item level people signing up for my pugs. 
So I had a choice, ladies and gentlemen. The raid goes ahead or it doesn't. And of course I wanted to raid. So I started taking in lower and lower item level people. People I considered to be scrubs. I'll be honest with you. My groups became mostly scrubs. Most people didn't understand what was happening. I didn't understand them either. But I expected them to. <laughs> At least you're honest. I'll be honest. I don't know what the mechanics are. But I expect these people to. <laughs> it's, it's so true. It's like painfully true, man. It's painfully true. But then a night came. A singular evening to change it all. I picked some scrubs like always, but in amongst them there was this man. And he was different. He was a paladin like me, but undergeared, a scrub, less item level than I had. I didn't think much of him at the time. I in fact didn't really want him in case he would take loot I wanted. Then Kargath came. That paladin, Nystrom was second on the damage meter. Second. I had never even seen my name that high on the list. I could not believe my eyes. I started trying to reset my damage meter in case it was broken, but it wasn't. When we stood in front of the butcher, it happened again. This paladin Nystrom, less gear than me, second on the damage meter. I inspected him over and over. Perhaps he was swapping gear or maybe he was trying to trick me. He had the same talents as me. Not that. I started checking his achievements and there I saw it, ladies and gentlemen. The difference between me and this man. The gold proving grounds achievement. Imagine. I didn't even have bronze. It says here in brackets, I think. I don't know if I had silver. I may have got it using potions and things. <clears throat> it then hit me. Of course. Of course. If you manage to get gold in the proving grounds, you probably get some kind of buff. Because you're now ready to tackle PvE. It must be some sort of new aura or something that's the only thing that makes sense how this same talents undergeared paladin could be second on the damage meter defeating me so easily so my goal was clear i must travel to the proving grounds before i tell you the tale preach i should make it crystal clear this took me three days of nothing but proving grounds it was about 5 p.m when my journey began bronze proving grounds here we go we're going for bronze we're going in boys we're strapped Woo! getting that bronze done i don't remember exactly how long it took Two hours, three hours, somewhere in that margin. But I got bronze. <laughs> three hours to get bronze. Oh, man. What the fuck were you pressing, though, right? Really? <laughs> I considered this pretty easy. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> pretty good going. Good progress. Good progress. <laughs> kill the Saurok or kill the many rabbits. Then, silver time. I need the gold. In we go. It started to dawn on me. As if a cloud opened wide and a light shone upon my character. I started to realize that these enemies were doing things. Mechanics. Bug guys were casting orbs that would stun me. But I realized I could move away from it. <laughs> I'm memeing, but this is amazing. You're like, oh! Oh, oh my god! All this stuff, they're not all just nameplates to storm the vine storm, the vine storm, the vine storm, the vine storm. These are actually doing things. They're not just red bars that empty out. Oh my God. I noticed that if I stood behind the bug, it would die. 
its orb would hit itself, stunning him instead. But if I stood too close, I would be stunned as well. It all started to fall into place. Then came a particular mob in the silver proving grounds that was the wall. Impossible, I thought. It was a healer. I could defeat the small healer before he casted a spell, but the middle? Unstoppable. Every time I would attack him, he'd just heal to full. I could not kill him between the heal casts. He doesn't know what interrupt is. Oh, bless your heart, though, honestly. Honestly, bless your little heart. It's like, we'll laugh. And you probably laugh now, but honestly, bless your little heart. <laughs> the unstoppable healer. <laughs> it was the second heal. I couldn't do it. When the heal cooldown ended, he would be around 15% and then he would just heal himself up again. It was impossible. And I'm sorry to say, I decided to sleep. And kill him the next day. I gave up. But in we go for day two. In we go for day two. I tried for two hours day two. But I couldn't do it. There must be a trick. A mechanic. I had realized how it works with the orbs. But how could I get this to work? I opened my spell book. I started reading. I realized that my punch was called rebuke. And it could interrupt spell my punch. Previously I considered it useless as I had a sword. Why would I punch if I have a sword? Like it makes no sense, right? I mean it's I mean it's you gotta think about it. You gotta think about it we're using your upstairs thinker box. Uh is that uh, why would I do that? Once I saw that I could maybe interrupt the heal, I persevered. But I died to the last boss of the silver proving ground. A giant healer mob with two extra friends. Come on in. Hold on. Emma's calling me. Hello, I'm doing drama. Oh, Emma's desperate for painkillers. I'll be back in a sec. Sorry about that. Yeah, Emma's had a wisdom tooth out this morning, so she's just woke up and her face is like, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. So hopefully she'll be okay. <laughs> hopefully she'll be okay. Yeah, indeed, dude. Indeed. Big sadness. Okay, <laughs> so he dies to the last boss, a giant healer. I couldn't kill him in time. <sighs> I returned to the spell book. There must be more. I was reading through all these abilities I had. I found out that my avenging wrath increased my damage and wasn't just visual. You were using it to look cool in a transmog, weren't you? You were using it to look cool in your transmog. You thought it was like fucking, you thought it was a flying thing. Now you know why the class trial came in. Now you know why they gave us the class trial. <laughs> now you know. You've no idea, man. That's We don't know. We don't know. I had the whole thing last night about being in a bubble because we don't know. These guys come in and they're like, ooh, that's pretty. 
Oh my god. With this newfound power, I finished the Silver Proving Grounds. I should mention this as I write this story and look back. Some of you may be wondering, but my rotation was abysmal. We know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> my, I remember distinctly that I thought the way you played World of Warcraft, because it was supposed to be easy, was to press whatever was not on cooldown. I only had spells on my bars where the picture looked like it did damage. Also, we had buffs to keep up at the time. I managed somehow until this point, but I didn't know it at the time. It was not going to be enough. I still say that Wad Paladin was the best, by the way. Then, of course, with Silver in the books. It's time for the final showdown. The gold proving grounds. In we go. That fucking monkey. That monkey fucked me every single time. For those of you who didn't do the proving grounds or can't remember, <laughs> if it moved. <laughs> it moved. Oh no! It moved. And if it was far away, it threw bananas at you that made you miss. <laughs> oh no, it's moving. Why? I, as you can imagine, was not the gold standard in gaming. I could not, for the life of me, move and do damage. That's because, like, how can you do that, right? How can you do it? If I use my mouse to move, how do I click rend? It makes no sense. Moving and damage? Good God. I used my stun, but it didn't... St it, but it did not stun... It did not stun it for enough, long enough for me to kill the monkey and the healer. I went back to the spell book then. So far, it had been the source of all my power. The spells, imagine. But nothing worked. Nothing. There was no spell that allowed me to kill moving targets. <laughs> I need, like, lock-on, or laser guidance, or homing rockets... I need something like that to make this work. Like, there's got to be something in here that, like, tracks or something like that. So I did the only thing I could do, ladies and gentlemen. I gave up. I gave up. But it irked me. I sat back away at my PC from the proving ground for an hour. There must be an answer. I went back to the spell book again. Nothing. Talents, though. Perhaps the talents could help. There was a dog shit talent that was casted but stunned the target. If you attack the target, it broke the spell. So I didn't understand what use it had. True, right? True. I mean, I've got this repentance thing, mate. But, like, you could stun it, like. But as soon as you hit it, like, it's not stunned no more. So what's the point? Makes no sense. I've tried it, mate. I've tried out all my talents, but it don't fucking do nothing, mate. I'm trying to stun something, but then it just fucking... It breaks straight away. What's the point? I thought it was a terrible fucking spell while leveling. But maybe now. Maybe now was the moment for it to shine. That single spell. Changing talents, which is elitist, by the way, as we know. It made everything so smooth. I did not use any guide during this process, mostly because of pride. I wanted to learn for myself. But wouldn't you fucking know it, we hit another wall. There was two healers at once, and rabbits. And the healers healed each other. What the fuck? What the fuck? These two healers are not next to each other, and they heal each other. Like, what the hell? It was at least an hour to a couple of hours that I realized that sometimes they didn't heal each other. Sometimes they would heal the rabbits. What if I AoE'd the rabbits but didn't kill them and let the healers heal the rabbits while I killed the healers? Galactic Cosmic Brain engaged. During this process, 
I don't don't think for even a moment those of you hearing my tale of misery don't think I just moved from wave to wave I would do this for hours and hours and hours wiping for the smallest of mistakes I slept never knowing there was a nightmare mob coming for me so on to day three we go gold still not achieved I'm progressing and slogging my way through this golden proving grounds to gain the buff that would bring me glory in my pugs. But then the nightmare mob came. The giant char mob. By this point, I've improved. Unquestionably. You may sit there laughing, but I have improved a lot. I was doing way more damage. I was using spells. <laughs> I was doing AoE. I was using buffs. I got used to using all the things my class could do. But Shah wouldn't take any damage. I smashed it and smashed it and smashed it, but nothing. After my 10 wipes of getting frustrated, I realized that, oh, it has a weakened phase. I kept sciencing with extra buffs, small bloodlust. Proving Grounds gave you a bloodlust buff chest at certain points. When I didn't use it on the four different mob waves, the healer, shield, regular amber mobs, I couldn't kill them. So I progressed it without the buff and used the buff on wave 8 and 10 and 10 waves and big different waves. Around 5pm of the third day, I killed that last shot. And while I was cheering, a ghost bomb guy killed me. I dropped down. Seeing that exploding ghost over me. I just turned around, got up and walked away. I went and had my dinner and came back to finish the job. Around 9pm of the third day, I achieved gold in the proving ground. There was no buff, as you all well know. But I'll tell you what. The next time I went into a raid, I was number four on the damage meter. I learned. I knew how to interrupt. My rotation better. I could do some damage while moving. Now, I had achieved my pinnacle moment so far in World of Warcraft. I had become a mediocre player. And I was on my way. <laughs> Get it. Get it. And I was on my way to greatness. But my greatness and that story is for another time. Thank you for reading. And I hope you guys in chat enjoyed it. I think we enjoyed it in a painful way. <laughs> I think is how I would describe it. We enjoyed it in a painful way. Uh, <laughs> innocent. Absolutely, absolutely, definitely innocent. Next stop, average... <laughs> Hmm, innocent. I declare innocent, by the way. <laughs> I declare innocent. I think so. And that is a lovely story. We forget. I can't, I, I, I try and remember how bad I was at this game. At the start. But I don't have, I have footage of me playing in Classic. I'm a clicker, which is the most obvious problem. But other than that, I can't remember exactly how, how bad I was. I can't remember. I was pretty bad. I think I think I was pr not super terrible. It was not my first MMO. I had been gaming. I'm I'm an, I'm a super nerd. So I've been gaming since I was like four years old. I wasn't super bad. I don't think so. I'd like to think I wasn't. <laughs> I'd like to think I wasn't. But I, I was definitely terrible. I didn't understand stats and stuff. It's called Turbo Nerd. Yeah. I've been, a I've been playing games, like, pretty intensely since I was, like, four. Did you read your abilities? Yeah. Yeah, I was a warrior. I understood how overpower worked and Mortal Strike was important. Although I did think for a long time that Mortal Strike was a shit spell because it, it ate all my rage and I couldn't heroic strike. I remember thinking that. But I remember thinking that my Mortal Strike just didn't do as much damage as my heroic strike. I, of course, didn't understand that Heroic Strike was replacing my white attack, and it would have actually worked out. So, I, I made some some terrible errors along the way. 
uh, but not too bad. Can I point out how beautiful this is? Just look at this. Look at this. It's got like a picture and a title. Look at this. November 19th, 2020. Wow 101, Dr. Preach. How nice is this? Isn't this beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. Very pretty. <laughs> Role player? Let's find out. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> you guys seem to sense ball... Uh, sense these guys. <clears throat> Our introduction. Hollow ballers and a bro fist to that chat. I am 24 years old. I am a college student studying chemical engineering. That explains the formatting and presentation. Recently, I have gone through hell and back dealing with a cancer scare. He's back though. Big thumbs to you, pal. Luckily, it was not a sarcoma as they thought, and I got to keep my hands and my hair. Brackets, lol at you. Did you just use cancer to mock baldness at me? Whoa, dude. But it's got stones, which I'll appreciate. It's got stones, so I'm going to allow it. Struggling with one's own mortality is a tendency to make you introspective and reflect on all the good and bad times. Hence why I'm writing to you with one of the most magnificent and yet dreadful times of my life. I hope you enjoy my tale. I apologize if anything is illiterate. I am indulging in some scotch tonight. <laughs> okay, we'll get through. <clears throat> Part one is titled, ladies and gentlemen, Blissful Ignorance, which is what we just talked about, really. Our, our friend, our previous story is a great summary, summary of Blissful Ignorance. He made it all the way to Cap. He'd even led, raid led, pug raids. Yet, we know the reality of what was happening behind that keyboard, don't we? Now we know the true horror of what was leading those uh, pugs. For context, let's rewind. When World of Warcraft subscribers have yet to fall, and the same goes for my testicles, enter me, 13 years of age, and emo and depressed. I spent my time wallowing in Modern Warfare 2. The, the, oh, it feels, feels cliche. I would spend every day and night possible playing myself some Modern Warfare 2. Soon, I found a group of online friends who I played with daily. Every day, we would hop on and talk shit to players and wreck noobs. Although this was short-lived, the main members of the group were becoming increasingly distant. So I sent out the SOS text. Calling all nerds. The general consensus amongst us gamers. Call of Duty was boring. We on spritz alert, we are. Unreal. Unreal. They were trying out a new game. Something had inspired them. World of Warcraft. I didn't know anything about it. But I wanted to play with my friends. And that's what matters. After with some convincing of how god tier golden testicles this game was. I made my free account and joined the online sensation. My first character was a night elf hunter. Dot, 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 kidding. <laughs> it was a druid. There are no cliches in this story. <laughs> Allow me to correct you. 13 years of age, feeling emo, playing Modern Warfare 2 every night. Are you sure there are no cliches in this story? I was progressing like any noob would and getting lost in the cave right next to the spawn. Out of frustration, I coaxed my friend into guiding me to the nearest city. And there he came upon me. A level 43 dwarf hunter, RP walking on his ram mount. Ew. I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> this game sucks. Is that what an endgame character looks like? No thanks. At the moment, I knew this game was for me. The sight of his derpy elegance was magnificent. I had to level and become him. I must get my own ram. As soon as he came, he left hearth back to his capital city. The next week was challenging mostly because I didn't know where the druid trainer was. I spent a week stuck in Teldrassil with nowhere to go. Soon all my friends left and went back to playing Call of Duty because the PvP in WoW was not good. I was done, ready to quit, 
ready to go back to what I was comfortable with, like old slippers. I was about to log out when it appeared. Someone challenged me to a duel. This was the first time I had seen the prompt on my screen. P V P. I clicked yes. And a capped mage just polymorphed me constantly for 10 minutes straight. They were laughing. And the people nearby were just saying, question mark, question mark, question mark. I received a whisper. Bruh, 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 bruh. Why you no cat form though, mate? Why you no bruh? What are you doing? You're a druid. Bruh, bruh. Why you no cat form? I responded with question marks back. What the fuck are you talking about? Our dialogue beyond this point is irrelevant. But he showed me around the city and escorted me to the druid trainer. He gave me two gold, a slash pat, and left. <laughs> Aw. What a guy, by the way. Whoever that was, he went, come with me. Okay, I get it. Come with me. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Daddy's going to show you. All right. It's going to be okay. Come on. Well, let me show you. There's two gold. You have a good day now, all right? Suddenly, like magic. This is why you automatically get spells now, isn't it? No fucking way. Because of twats like you. This is why that happens. That's why they said people can't find the PvP vendor. People couldn't find the class trainers. Oh my god, it's just dawned on me that people probably never went to a class trainer. Because it's so fucking stupid. It never even occurred to me. It's like someone saying that their plants don't grow, but they've never planted them in soil. Holy shit. Because of you, instead of having really cool quests to get our summons, they just appear because you crossed the road and gained XP. <laughs> it hurts. It does hurt. That's why they did that. Because people wouldn't go to the trainers. Holy fucking shit. Oh man. That's eye opening. I feel like a firework just went off. Suddenly my spell book was filled with new exciting spells. You're a druid. No they weren't. They heavily piqued my interest. I could turn into a cat. For the first time was such a euphoric experience. At that moment my character felt powerful. And my spark for World of Warcraft was reunited. If only you'd, you'd, you'd just gone to the... Read the name of the NPC that says, like, Druid Trainer. Imagine that. I'm a Druid. Druid Trainer. One and one makes. You know? I never spoke to my friends again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I traded them all in for something far greater. A wholesome will, world I can explore. For new memories, progression, strength, I wanted it all. You're a chemical engineer, though. We've spritzed. We spritzed only a few minutes ago. I'm off kilter now. I'm off town. Right, we'll do a catch-up. Spritzed. Okay. <laughs> I need a guild name. It says, part two, my first guild. For this section, you're going to need the name of a flamboyant resto druid and a pretentious pun of a guild name involving sin. All right, challenge to you, audience. A pretentious pun of a guild name involving sin. Okay, oh, we'll stick with Dice Rock because he only got like one flash in the last story. The Kitchen Sin. I love it. The Kitchen Sin. Love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think these are good choices of story this week, considering we're all about to be noobs on Monday again. <laughs> At this point, my energy was slowing down. I had been solo gaming in World of Warcraft for weeks. I had reached level 58 and traveling to a new zone on a hold. I leveled per usual, but I was depressed. I had no friends outside of school. My first girlfriend, my first love, Broke up with me out of the blue. Since we were going to go to different high schools. It was a hard time for me. But the worst of it all. Wasn't my lack of friends. It wasn't my lack of girlfriend. It was that I couldn't afford a flying mount. 
my wow character was too poor. I feel you, homie. I'll pour out a spritz for you, bruv. Pour out a spritz. I spent the next couple of days traveling the world on foot like an idiot as people flew around me. Just taking in the scenery before I decided to leave this game behind. I can't continue playing like this. It felt hopeless, deserted, painful. I decided I wanted to say goodbye to the game that I had loved so much for a short period of time. I was going to go on a walk through Stormwind one final time. And I ended up in the tram. As soon as I entered, the smallest little bit of XP was granted to me. And I hit level 60. And it was truly a sight to behold. Following this, I could see on my chat bar that one of them was flashing. I clicked the one saying guild. I wasn't even aware I was in a guild. Looking back, I must have joined one at random so I would stop being spammed with invites. In there, there was all this green text. And right now, there was nearly 10 people saying grats. A new world had opened up. As underwhelming as it was in hindsight, for me, at that point in World of Warcraft, it was fucking huge. It was as if I had just found these friends that were sat right next to me. I replied. A conversation started. Soon they said, why don't you come on Ventrilo? Of course. Why not? I ignorantly joined it to my surprise. I was greeted by a friendly man. A high ranking officer of the guild. He was a resto druid named, named Nystrom. He welcomed me to the guild as a recruit of the Kitchen Sin. And said he was glad that we joined him on comms. I was ecstatic. I cannot downplay this enough. As ordinary as it might seem to you guys now. I was so happy. I felt welcomed. I was talking to people who existed in the game that I was enjoying. I was having conversations. I started complaining about the fact that I had been playing solo. And they replied that they had been trying to talk to me for days. <laughs> and without, <laughs> and without, without a heart skipping a beat. Nystrom invited me to a group, found me in the Stormwind tram, and told me to follow him. I agreed, and before I knew it, I was back in on a hold with a trade window open from him, transferring me enough gold to buy flying. What a dude! How much was early flying? It was like 20 gold, right? Or 100 gold? Some bullshit, right? <laughs> First flying? Some bullshit. Flying out, <laughs> yeah, it was like 90 G or something, right? It was fucking, fucking crap. <laughs> flying in Outlands and my first flying mount, just as the mage earlier, a spark, just as the mage earlier, a spark was reunited. I must have flown around on a hold for two hours talking with Nystrom. Before I knew it, I was declaring my full pledge of allegiance to become a devoted member of the Kitchen Sin. Of course you were. You owe them everything, right? You owe them your World of Warcraft experience. You owe them your fucking life. 5k was when you capped. 5k was for the speedy, speedy, speedy version. The slow one, which no, which was awful and was less useful than a ground mount. I think it was slower than a ground mount, right? Original, original flying was slower than a ground mount, if I remember. It was fucking terrible. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> The good times. <laughs> yeah, it was. The good times. You guys don't know. You guys who joined after the Burger Crusade, you don't know what we went through. You don't know. You weren't there, bro. You weren't there. It was rough. We will need... Okay, the good times then. All right, let's go through the good times because I have a, a sneaky suspicion the bad times are coming. Okay. Well, yep, yeah, they're coming. For this, we will need a male GM and his wife co-GM. Of course we do. Of course we do. So let's have Tobias. Let's have Tobias. And, uh... Oh, we need a sneaky rogue as well. Flower. Welcome, Flower. And... Uh, uh, Jen. The two ends. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> 
Oh no, yeah, should we, should we show them off? We haven't shown them for a while. There they are at the window. There they are. They're coming to fuck your experience up, man. They're coming. They're coming. Let's go forward to December 5th. Oh god, we've got the date. Let's go forward to December 5th, 2010. I am almost level 80. I am driven at this point by pure will, power, and excitement. Because the GM, a warrior named Tobias, and his lovely wife, Jen, promised that they would do some dungeons with me. <laughs> I commit... Wow. The guild master of this spamming invite guild will do a dungeon with me. With me. What am I to be so blessed? Blessed on this day. They said that if I proved myself, then potentially I could join a guild raid. Holy Jesus. That's a lot of pressure. I might need my headband back. That's a lot of pressure. Well, the day obviously came. Level 79. I was finishing my last few quests as I was determined and ready to begin the end game journey. I remember it clearly. It was in Ice Crown. And the text appeared, I have finally reached level 80. I remember squealing out of excitement. I think I almost cried. It had been such a long road. But I'm here. I immediately messaged my guildmates. Dungeons! 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 Tobias responded, why the fuck would we do dungeons? Cataclysm's out this week. I didn't even know they were making another expansion. I had just capped. I would finally just finished the road. I spent a few months leveling and apparently I had to do it again in two days. I had to convince my mother to drive me to GameStop to buy the expansion by trading one car wash a week for the month. For the next month. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little side story here. I cleaned my dad's car once when I was a teenager and he gave me five pounds cash, right? That's big money. Five large. So about two weeks later, I really, really wanted some dinosaur magazine. Right? Because I think you could build your own dinosaur off the front of it. Dinosaurs. Jurassic Park was just out. I'm old as fuck. Jurassic Park was out. It was going to be popping. There was all dinosaur shit everywhere. So I goes to my dad, thinking I'm big brain, and say, Dad, do you need me to clean your car? And he goes, I do, son. So I did. Clean that fucking car. And after I was done, I came back to him and said, Dad, I've done it. And he went, well done, son. And then he just walked the fuck away. Bastard. Played me like a goddamn fiddle. Played me like a... I, I, yeah, I learnt my lesson that day. <laughs> I learnt my fucking lesson that day. <laughs> I said, I think I asked him eventually. I think, I think the stress of it got overwhelming. And I was like, you're not going to give me any money. And he went, why? You asked to do it, didn't you? I thought you were just doing something nice. Made me feel bad. But of course, I was like 10 years old or whatever. So <laughs> he went, go on, read your magazine. <laughs> Gave me the money. <laughs> I said, don't ask to do it like that again, though. <laughs> yeah, pro farmer, dude. Pro farmer. I'm going to do it to my kids. Can't fucking wait. <laughs> I'm going to get really evil with it. Get twisted up. So I could be trading in a car wash a week. <laughs> Leveling was a drag. But I reached 85 in no time. Leveling in Cataclysm was not a drag. Watch your mouth. Yeah? M-O-U-F. Mouth. Watch it. But I reached 85 in no time. Once I stopped getting lost in that underwater hitbox nightmare with water pony raiding zone. Vashir is a fucking delight. A delight. Bashir is one of the fastest zones in the game to level in. It's a delight. Bashir is amazing. It has submarines and shit. It's really good. No, go back and do Vashir now. That zone is awesome. The fastest one. You guys are just bad. Bad, bad. Back to the proving grounds with a lot of you. It was finally time to do... Heroic dungeons. 
and I got to do them with my guild. I was mostly dying because they were hard for us at the time. Oh, Kata? Yeah, fair enough. These were some of the best times I'd had in a video game ever. It didn't matter how big our repair bill was, we would always complete the dungeon and we called ourselves the Dream Team. Me, a feral druid, my resto druid friend, the GM, the GM's wife, and last but not least, a rogue named Flower. Flower was truly the absolute epitome of the coolest person I'd ever met. He was clearly very comfortable about with that, around women with the way he would talk to the co-GM's wife so casually. Whoa, that dude is not sweating when he talks to a girl. Legit coolest guy I've ever met. I swear to God. I swear to God. Like, he just talked to her. Like she was a person. Fucking crazy. I mean, knocking foots. Absolutely knocking foots. What a dude. What a fucking dude. I, I, I'm pretty sure that guy just lives in a room of pussy. Do you know what I mean? What a full man. A full man. An absolute man. He always told us stories of lust and degeneracy. <laughs> I really looked up to him. <laughs> oh my god. During this time, the guild was perfect close friends. Casual as it was social. At this rate, we can end the story since a, ca a social casual guild with a couple in charge. We know how it's going to end. My life follows the same trend. Very high points, very low points. This high point, though, and of course the story can't end there, is of course about to come to a dead stop. Contextually, <laughs> I have to highlight some of the not yet mentioned inner workings of how the social casual environment is created. It's kind of weird, isn't it? I'm talking to the audience right now. In order to create these social, relaxed, casual environments, it does seem to require an awful lot of complicated rules. Hmm. Interesting. What do you think? Interesting. <clears throat> I just find that very interesting. Tobias and Jen were married, and many of the guild inhabits uh, many of the guild inhabitants were members of their work and town. Hmm. Oh dear! I really like that. I don't get to vet these stories at the moment. This is really cool. I did not expect this. <laughs> okay. The only outsiders were myself and Nystrom. So there was, on time to time, drama between the residents, residents of the guild. <coughs> Outsiders, yeah. The telling sign was when you logged into Vent and it was dead quiet, but the whole room was full. Of course, being a naive teenager, I tried to mend fences. Oh my god. I would say they should talk it out. I would explain to them that the guild isn't just friends, everybody. We're a family. They had helped me through being depressed and emo and all that. And so much more. I owed it to them and myself to make this work. But this time... It, oh, <laughs> this time was not to be the case. Accusations had been thrown around. A simple accusation. Apparently... Alpha Chad Flower had fucked Jen, the co-GM, the GM's wife. I couldn't even fathom this. How could someone as cool <laughs> as Flower, a friend with his integrity, do something like that? I like the way that like she didn't even get a look in. <laughs> of course she did that, but Flower... I don't know, man. That's where things don't add up, right? That's where it doesn't... It, I mean, I, it, we expect it of her, the wife. But Flower? Things escalated quickly as soon as I began to defend him. Why would you defend him? You don't even know him. I, but he is my friend. I shall defend this man. <laughs> I will defend him. Because, and his integrity. I got told to shut the fuck up by Tobias. 
He even screamed at me and called me, and I remember this so clearly, a retarded child homunculus. Burn. <laughs> what hot fire. <laughs> Immediately, Nystrom chimed in to defend us both, saying we're both good people and not to fight amongst ourselves. Come on, casual social guild. Okay, so you, your wife cheated on you with another member of the guild. Casual social guild, though. Let's bring it in. Bring it in. Bro it out, yeah? Bro it chest to chest. Chest to chest. Nut to nut. Let's get it done. It was about 30 minutes of us fighting. Until we saw Jen log on and then G quit. Well, that kind of says the story. I think, I think the accusations are true. <laughs> the silence that corresponded was unbearable. I know what is about to happen. One by one, everybody in the guild just quit. Not just the guild, the game. Apparently this was causing a major upset in, their, upset in their small town. The very next day, the vent server was gone. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> it's just fucking scorched earth, motherfucker. And there I was again. Lost, guildless, friendless. And I was completely confused about what actually happened. But then, then came the letter. After the actions of my guildmates, I took a week off to collect my thoughts and hope it would magically just kind of fix itself. And when I would log back in, everything would be fine. Well, when I logged in, there was a surprise waiting for me. It was an in-game mail. It means it's official. I had never had an actual in-game mail before. So I waddled over to the mailbox and what I saw inside took my breath away. The letter was from Flower. It was a letter describing what actually went down and some thoughts of kindness. I remember it very clearly and it went this way. Ha, <laughs> bro! <laughs> of course it starts like this. Ha, <laughs> bro! The accusations are true. I hogtied that cow and I don't regret it. Hmm. Hmm. Tobias was cheating on his wife for two years with their neighbor, so this is her way to get out of it. But I do regret leaving without saying goodbye to everybody. Flower. <laughs> Considering how you wrote this story, like we were reading Pride and Prejudice of all things and the disaster of a town, this is the letter you got at the end of it. Bro, yeah, I hogtied that cow. Couldn't give a shit, would do again. There you go. And this is the guy he looked up to and defended his integrity as well. Nice. <laughs> it's for his honor. Hogtied that cow. Jesus, that is about the most American thing I've ever heard. I hogtied that cow. He deserved it, Flower. Exactly. Flower bidding me farewell and told me to take care and always remember the good times. As I took the bottom of the note, I noticed he sent me the gold of his character of 94,000 gold. Nice. I was happy and yet sad. So I decided to continue what the mage and Nystrom did for me. Everyone in need of help, I would seek out and see if I could help them. To this day, I am the same way, especially outside of World of Warcraft. But I encourage everyone to do the same. It's very rewarding. I must say this was some of the best... Uh, this says side notes. I must say this was some of the best times and some of the worst times of my life. The only person I've kept in contact is with Nystrom. As a month ago, I played WoW every expansion by myself in my free time with no guild I ever joined could bring back that original experience I had. They can. There are lo loads of guilds out there. You'll be fine. You can find other people. With that said, my good friend recently made me server and race change to the Horde so I could join him and his guild and go Mythic Raiding. I am excited for the Shadowlands and ready for the BFA to perish. Thank you for listening and thank you, Dr. Preach, for creating this amazing community. Hmm... Also, always remember, do not hogtie the GM's wife. Also, I data... Uh, did you see this data mind class from a few years back? It's a Brewmaster Jedi. Ah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good there. That's pretty good. That's awesome. Thanks for that. Yeah. The end. <laughs> the end. That's not bad. That's not bad. Modern art. Yes, indeed. Modern art at its best. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the final drama time of Battle for Azeroth. We're saying goodbye to a lot of things. 
Same shirt. I have three of these shirts that I'm cycling until my, I can actually wear a t-shirt again. Because uh, obviously I can't. BFA comes to an end in three days. Three days, ladies and gentlemen. It's coming to an end. And we have a big celebration to kick it all off on Monday. And we have a timer that is now the forefront of PreachGaming.com. Which for all you wonderful people here, especially you who have subscribed, should be very happy for you guys. Should have a lot of cool content for you and all that wonderful stuff. So PreachGaming.com does have your timer on it. So you can track it down. Three days, three hours and 55 minutes till the party starts. Goodbye, BFA. And good riddance. I'll probably see you over the weekend because we need to finish Spider-Man before it comes out. Before the channel ends comes out. All right. Be good. Be awesome. I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you.